Growing Up in America A reader might ask why two people who have devoted their careers to writing about foreign affairs, one of us as a foreign correspondent and columnist at the New York Times, and the other as a professor of American foreign policy at the Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies, have collaborated on a book about the American condition today? The answer is simple. We have been friends for more than 20 years, and in that time, hardly a week has gone by without our discussing some aspect of international relations and American foreign policy. But in the last couple of years, we started to notice something. Every conversation would begin with foreign policy, but end with domestic policy, what was happening or not happening in the United States. Try as we might to redirect them, the conversations kept going back to America and our seeming inability today to rise to our greatest challenges. This situation, of course, has enormous foreign policy implications. America plays a huge, and more often than not, constructive role in the world today. But that role depends on the country's social, political, and economic health. And America today is not healthy, economically or politically. This book is our effort to explain how we got into that state and how to get out of it. We beg the reader's indulgence with one style issue. At times, we include stories, anecdotes, and interviews that involve only one of us. To make clear who is involved, we must in effect quote ourselves, as Tom recalled, as Michael wrote. You can't simply say, I said or I saw, when you have co-authored a book with a lot of reporting in it. Readers familiar with our work know us mainly as authors and commentators, but we are also both, well, Americans. That is important, because that identity drives the book as much as our policy interests do. So here are just a few words of introduction from each of us, not as experts, but as citizens. I was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and was raised in a small suburb called St. Louis Park, made famous by the brothers Ethan and Joel Cohen in their movie A Serious Man, which was set in our neighborhood. Senator Al Franken, the Cohn brothers, the Harvard political philosopher Michael J. Sandel, the political scientist Norman Ornstein, the longtime NFL football coach Mark Tressman, and I all grew up in and around that little suburb within a few years of one another, and it surely had a big impact on all of us. In my case, it bred a deep optimism about America and the notion that we really can act collectively for the common good. In 1971, the year I graduated from high school, Time magazine had a cover featuring then-Minnesota Governor Wendell Anderson holding up a fish he had just caught under the headline, The Good Life in Minnesota. It was all about the state that works. When the senators from your childhood were the Democrats Hubert Humphrey, Walter Mondale, and Eugene McCarthy, your congressmen were the moderate Republicans Clark McGregor and Bill Frenzel, and the leading corporations in your state Dayton's, Target, General Mills, and 3M, were pioneers in corporate social responsibility and believed that it was part of their mission to help build things like the Tyrone Guthrie Theater, you wound up with a very deep conviction that politics really can work and that there is a viable political center in American life. I attended public school with the same group of kids from K through 12. In those days in Minnesota, private schools were for kids in trouble. Private school was pretty much unheard of for middle-class St. Louis Park kids, and pretty much everyone was middle-class. My mom enlisted in the U.S. Navy in World War II, and my parents actually bought our home thanks to the loan she got through the GI Bill. My dad, who never went to college, was vice president of a company that sold ball bearings. My wife, Ann Buxbaum, was born in Marshalltown, Iowa, and was raised in Des Moines. To this day, my best friends are still those kids I grew up with in St. Louis Park, and I still carry around a mental image, no doubt idealized, of Minnesota that anchors and informs a lot of my political choices. No matter where I go, London, Beirut, Jerusalem, Washington, Beijing, or Bangalore, I'm always looking to rediscover that land of 10,000 lakes where politics actually work to make people's lives better, not pull them apart, 
That used to be us. In fact, it used to be my neighborhood.